We're good? Good morning, everyone. Are yeah. mute or? You're good. Yeah, can you hear us? Yes, you can. Ah. We can hear you fine. Yeah, you can hear fine. Awesome. How's everybody doing? So first things, Happy New Year's, everyone. All the best for this 2021. I hope we're going to have a better year than last year, which is not hard. Uh, we made it safe, all of us, so that's good. Thank you last night and tonight for your support with us. But very nice from you, very important for, for us to have such a good response. And that's why we keep doing it, is uh, because of you and by you. So thank you very much. So today we are going to show you the face of the onion, the little onion tar that uh, we've done last night. You've got few different ways, you can few different things you can put on top. You can put some anchovy, which usually on the south of France, that's the classic, what, what we call pisa la dia with anchovy or with sun-dried tomato. And uh, what uh, I decided yesterday was to do a tapenade, to put it on the, on the puff pastry and put the onion on top. Okay, so I'm going to show you the... Peel your onion, classic. And what we do on the kitchen is that can be bitter on that, never break down, which is actually that one. You see that? We take it out. Okay. After that, you need to cut it extremely thin. The most important is not the speed. Sometimes speed can bring blood also from your finger. So take your time on that. Okay. So by the quantity we've done on the size you had last night, uh, that was approximately half an onion per portion. You can feel me from here. Okay, touch your bowl. And now, you just saute the onion, okay? And that takes quite a long time. Like, it's like you, you see the size of a thin, that's what you want. They need to be extremely thin, okay? So now, put a touch of salt, not much. Don't put too much salt now, because again, that's going to reduce a lot for a long time. So the salt doesn't go away. The salt reduces. Okay, so now I want to show you. So that's the beginning of your process. Now you're nearly at 15 minutes. And you can see the liquid the onion gave you. That's what's going to reduce after that. And that I go very slowly every time for that. So that the second part after a good 10, 15 minutes, okay? And now that the last step, as you can see, all the liquid is gone. Okay, you can see on the bottom of it, that start to stick a little bit, which is normal because your liquid is done. So that means now when you test your onion, onion granulate squeak because you're ready for the test of onion or the liquid. Okay, finish it with touch of herb, thyme, rosemary. And now you check your salt and pepper for the seasoning because the reduction is over now. Okay, so I just wanted to show you these three steps. Step one, step two. Okay. On step three, with all the liquid reduce. So that's very important that you don't have any more liquid. First thing is for the test. And the second thing is if your onion has got too much liquid, that's going to destroy your puff pastry during the cooking time. Okay, the, the puff pastry cannot get so much liquid. So everything we put on the on the puff pastry needs to be dry. Okay, 
So this is it for the little uh, little crispy onion tart you're going to have tonight. The second thing is now we're going to do is the carb. I'm going to put it cooking for you and after we're going to talk about that recipe. So here, like last, last, last night, we've done it. We've done it on the red wine. Thank you, Julian, on the fish, as you can see. Most important here is to have a good fish, fresh fish. As you can see, the fish is translucent, white, shiny, doesn't smell, firm, very nice. So that's the, that's the main thing, salt, pepper on both sides. Not much because the red wine, the red wine is seasoning also. Okay, little bit of seasoning. Here you got a pot of red wine. This is really simmering, simmering. You never boil a fish. If a fish is boiling, it's going to break down. Okay, so you keep it extremely gently like that. Has to be covered. And now that's going to cook nearly gently for nearly four minutes, approximately. I will, I will let you know, I will show you how you can see that's cooked, okay? So now, few things that you need to know about the poached fish, which is very, I, I, I like that cuisson. Uh, first thing, the poached fish like that is very healthy because you don't use any fat. Okay, so the reason why I do it on the winter time, but very on the, on the red wine, but very winter, you know, it's like it's like you, you can think of it like a cock oven on a bourguignon, but with fish cooked in red wine. So that, that's very different. That's not very useful, but you know, we, we push the fish on red wine. Uh, you can use different fish, usually white fish. Okay, here we've done it with cod. You can do it with halibut. You can do it with turbot. You can do it with sole. Sole are very thin, so we cook much quicker. Okay, the, the, so I went on the healthy side. Now flavor, because you can do that different time of the year. So if you do that on the summer time, you can use champagne, rosé, white wine. You can put all the herbs you like from your garden. You really can put the flavor inside the posh, the, inside your pot with that. You can put some slice of lemon. You can put some slice of lime. You can, you know, if you use if you use champagne, you put you do half rosé, half champagne. You don't have to do just don't empty your bottle of champagne on the on the pot. Keep some for yourself, of course. And so yes, that, that, that that's extremely nice during the year. You can change. Uh, I've done it once on rosé at home. That's very nice. That's very interesting. Okay, so without any fat, without you know, and also that's an easy cooking. You just bring your, your, your liquid to a simmer. You put your fish on it. You don't need a special pot. You don't need, you know, the, uh, a pot that doesn't stick. You don't. You that, that's an easy way. That's an easy on a quick way. Okay. So that's what I wanted to tell you about the poached fish. There's many ways you can do it. That's easy. There's no special techniques on your side. You can't be scared about the, the you know, do we put flour on the fish or not? That's that's completely up to you. Okay. So the equipment you need here. Is that okay? Because at one point, when your fish is cooked, your fish is coming, you're going to dry it. Okay. So, here you need a few more minutes, as you can see. If you boil the fish, the, the, the protein is going to break. You know, if you if you if you boil a, a, a chicken breast, it doesn't it doesn't get it, it doesn't get broken. But the fish is very is, is very fragile, so that's why you need always take your time. The fish doesn't boil, it doesn't go anywhere. You know, if you do that for your friend at home, just put it few four four five minutes before you decide to serve it, and that's that's enough time. You keep it on your stove like that, okay. That's it. And uh, for for tonight, uh, I've done I've done a little uh, red wine butter sauce, and to make it a little bit uh, wintry, I've done it with a bit of uh, cinnamon, which is really unusual also to go with fish. 
So, but that's very light, that's very nice. So I, I, I hope, I hope you, will, you, you will enjoy it. And then, of course, the anchor and the risotto. The anchor and the risotto is really delicate too. So here I just put the red wine, bay leaves, salt, and that's it. Okay, I kept it very simple. I just want the wine, the wine to be to be strong on the fish. You get when you go to pick up your fish, you don't just don't go like that. You see how the fish start to open now? Okay, as you can see here, it's not cooked, but you need a few more minutes. Just maybe two minutes here, one minute on the half. Okay, but always go by the side. If you don't go by the side, that's, uh, that you, you, you might break it. Okay, so that's the difference between a poaching and uh, steam fish. I've done some steam fish before, and uh, you, you can put any flavor you, you want on your liquid. But I've always been thinking that the, 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 the steam doesn't give you a flavor you want on the fish. That's an healthy way. But if you put a lot of time on your, on your liquid, I don't think the time get on the fish too much. So I, I, I really believe that, that you know, the, 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 the healthy side is the same with poaching, but you really get the taste on the flavor you want on the fish. Okay, so I think we're going to be nearly done here. Uh, Julian, what do you think? Huh? Uh, that's it. You see, as you can see here, uh, that's it. The fish is done now. You can, that's still firm. Okay. And as you can see, that start to fall apart. So that now, your fish is cooked, okay? It, it doesn't break, that's when you didn't overcook it. Except a little corner here. And that's it. So how, that's how you do a poaching. So it doesn't matter what the liquid is, the, te the technique is the same, okay? And after that, you put that, you know, near salad, on your risotto, on your sauteed potatoes, whatever you decide from your garden a nice little ratatouille if you decide to, 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 to poach that on the summertime with some rosé of champagne. You've got many ways, many ways you can play with it and uh, please yourself. So thank you very much. Now I'm going to pass you to the pastry chef that is waiting for you here for the dish. Cook for you and uh, happy cooking, like we always say. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody. So we have the warm chocolate lava cake for, whoops, we'll wait for that, uh, for the dessert this week, which we already have video on the blog. So if you go on uh, shaynubister.com and on the blog, you'll see the lava cake. And we did a little Facebook live video back in March or April with the instructions on how to make the lava cake. So you can check that out, it's, um, it's short. And so what I wanted to show you today was how I do the mint cream, the creme de menthe cream, which I put on the side of the cake. And I, th I, I, mean, I thought that this was my brilliant idea, but this is not my brilliant idea. This is a concept of a whipped ganache that um, I started doing back when I had the bakery, when I needed a quick filling for a cake. I would always had chocolate ganache around, whip some cream and fold in some ganache and you get the flavor of the ganache lightened with the cream. It sets in the fridge and you get an instant filling. So I thought I was brilliant, but in fact, no. So the, the new book by uh, one of my gurus, Dominique Ansel, Everyone Can Bake, and then I saw this, my go-to whipped ganache. But of course, um, he has to make it even better because he really is a genius and he uses mascarpone, which I have not done yet. So maybe next time. He also uses gelatin, which I don't use. So what I wanted to explain, let's go over here, is the concept of the whipped ganache, you make a ganache like normal, which is cream and chocolate. 
So it's white chocolate because it, we want to get the flavor in, but you can use any kind of chocolate. And you bring a small amount of cream to a boil. And as you could see, I had my, my chocolate over the cream to melt, to start melting. And now that hot cream finishes the melting. Okay. And now we whisk this smooth, make sure everything's melted. Now you've got your base for your whipped ganache. This is the ganache part, okay? And this is like the, the middle of a chocolate truffle. Just cream and chocolate. Now you can flavor it however you want. I've Sometimes I use a fruit puree like raspberry or passion fruit. Sometimes I put some orange zest and Grand Marnier. Sometimes I put, um, you know, if it's dark chocolate, you can just do a, a dark chocolate one or with a little creme de coco. And the main thing is I put a little salt. I always put a little salt in all of my desserts. And then because we're doing mint, creme de menthe, I have my alcohol. Okay. So you're going to laugh at me because I'm going to put a lot. Whoops. I'm going to put a lot. Uh, when I say something's creme de menthe, I want you to taste the creme de menthe. Okay, no making fun. So, because it's a mint cream in the summer, why uh, you can take some of your mint from your garden and boil it with your cream and strain it onto the chocolate and add some fresh mint flavor, which would be fantastic. But because I don't have that, I'm gonna boost it with a little um, uh, natural mint extract. And again, I'm making a large quantity here. The proportions I'll put on um, on the website will be will be smaller. And here, as you can see, I'm going to taste because this is um, this is basically you know, what you want it to be. You're, you can't go wrong with this. That's what I like. It's a no fail recipe. Okay, so here is the cream. I've already whipped it. And what we, what we call for mousse for whipped ganache is semi whipped, as you can see. It's not um, stiff peaks, it's soft peaks. Because you're gonna whip it together with the whisk here, I don't want it to be uh, too firm or it doesn't incorporate as well without getting over whipped. And we know what happens with over whipped cream, you end up with butter. So we don't want that. And like I say, I don't need gelatin. That's my only problem with my friend Dominique Ansel's recipe because the, the white chocolate is going to set it for me. But I definitely, so you see, I'm lightly folding. So I keep my volume, keep it nice and fluffy. But I don't want it to taste like white chocolate. I don't know about you. White chocolate's not my favorite flavor. Here, the white chocolate is, is adding the sweetness. You can see there's no sugar in this recipe. It's just the white chocolate. And the creme de coco is sweet. And the creme de menthe. And it's adding that structure. You see how it's already setting up to a nice mousse? And I've even frozen this and served it as a, like almost like a quick ice cream, like a semi fredo. It does not get too firm. There's the alcohol, the air and the whipped cream. And uh, it's just delicious. Do we have a way to make uh, it, uh, questions available for anything before we finish? To unmute everybody, if they have questions? No? Yeah. Yes, can we do that? <laughs> okay, so everything is nicely incorporated, and now we just have to test. We just have to make sure that it has enough mint flavor. Can you ask can you ask question on the phone? If anybody has any questions, it is delicious, fresh, minty. Um, but like I say, you can use whatever you want. You can combine chocolates. 
And uh, you'll let me know how you like it when you taste it tonight, okay? Question. <laughs> when um, the chef was cooking the onions, uh, were, what were they, was it butter or oil or nothing? Oil. It was oil. Oil. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, but, but that, that dish, except the puff pastry, doesn't have any butter. The onion, just olive oil. We, I don't even put any white wine on it. You cook, you, you cook through and you cook down your onion to the head with basically olive oil, salt, paper, and chopped herbs at the end. This is okay. it. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Because you've got, you've got the, the reason why I didn't put also nothing on onion, that's on the bottom of onion, you've got the tapenade, which the tapenade's got olives, garlic, mustard. You've got many things. So I kept the onion just to be the way there. What Any other questions? Of, what type of uh, red wine do you use? Regular red wine. I mean, what we call, you know, kitchen red wine, nothing. Like, like I say, you know, we've got a great chef in France called uh, Paul Bocuse. And uh, he used to say that what we use for cooking, that what, or what you use for drinking on a table, that's what you, you should cook with. And uh, I'm telling you, if you drink a nice Chateau Neuf du Pape with that, do not cook with Chateau Neuf du Pape. You give it to me. Just, just, a, regular, <laughs> just a regular red wine. Nothing, nothing special. Uh, nothing I was special. getting, nothing I else. was getting at whether it would be a, like a Pinot Noir or a, or a. I think a fuller bodied because you want the, if you want the red wine flavor to come through, use a fuller bodied like Cabernet, Merlot. Syrah. Syrah, exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, for drinking with it, maybe you want that lighter Pinot Noir, but to get the flavor in the fish, I would stay away to, from the lighter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jolien is asking for a taste. We're going to get the, we're going to get the official cameraman opinion on the, on the ganache. And he's, he's happy. <laughs> is your mommy pass for this? <laughs> He has the hardest jobs. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Be well, okay? Thank you very much. Stay safe. We'll Thank see you, you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.